Karage Mikoi, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you all to our first session here this morning. And it is my great pleasure to, to introduce to you uh, one of uh, Slovakia's foremost politicians, uh, Jan Fiegel. Uh, Jan Fiegel was uh, the first European commissioner from Slovakia, commissioner for culture, education, multilingualism and, and youth. He was uh, Slovakia's uh, chief negotiator to join the European Union. Uh, former uh, Deputy Prime Minister, former um, Vice President of the Slovak Parliament, and uh, last year he was appointed uh, by the European Commission as Special Envoy for Freedom of Religion and of Belief in areas outside of Europe, for instance in uh, the Middle East and Africa and uh, Asia. Uh, as an Irish person, I'm very interested in this area because we had our own problems in Northern Ireland and we have at least uh, reached some kind of uh, accommodation between the various religious communities in Northern Ireland and uh, as a speaker of Esperanto I'm very interested in this area because Zamenhof who founded Esperanto it was just uh, the lingu language was just a, an instrument but his real aim in life was peace and uh, bringing peace between people of different beliefs of different religions or of no religion uh, to have a more peaceful world. So it's, it dovetails very nicely with the, the work of Jan Fiegel now for uh, religious freedom and, and peace between the believers in different uh, religions and, uh, and non-believers. So without further ado, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Jan Fiegel, who will speak to you on diversity and unity, effective multilingualism in Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Sean, for warm welcome and for your contributions, your uh, commitment and cooperation. Uh, welcoming evening was last night, so now let's say more about the work or ideas which we could develop and share together on promotion of multilingualism in Europe and from Europe in the world because we are important part of global family, global uh, humanity. I, I mentioned yesterday that uh, we have to learn to live together in diversity. Living together means more than existing together. 70 years of peace in Europe, in European Union, is based on respect to cultural, religious, linguistic diversity. And respect is more than tolerance. Tolerance is important, but respect is more. And of course, respect presupposes communication, uh, knowledge, interest, of course, uh, shared, something shared, at least part of vision, part of interests. And the more we, you know, respect living together, I think the more we find what is our common heritage, our common destiny, our common ground, common good. These are not empty words. This is not poetry. These are principles, important objectives and criteria of daily life or policies, local, regional, national, international. So, um, I mentioned yesterday that uh, unity, not uniformity, is, is a challenge. Because unity has value only when it's based on diversity, on respect, on equality of all, on participation for all, not just for majority, for some. And um, in a way we need to look to old things or issues or challenges by new eyes, new ways, new approach, through innovations, to be innovators. For example, Robert Schumann was innovator with Adenauer. They didn't follow the previous steps. They, they started a new path. I'm an engineer, I don't want to say it's more or less, but innovation means to do more for less energy, for less money, etc. Yeah? It doesn't mean questioning the quality or quantity or conditions, but doing things better, more efficiently. Yes, I was first uh, chief negotiator and the first uh, commissioner from Slovakia to build new Europe, 
new Europe is not accomplished or achieved reality, but it's, it's a new Europe, definitely. And I don't want to speak too much on geopolitics and even politics, but uh, to see, to see uh, and to think in innovational terms and conditions means to do things better. Uh, it doesn't mean elaboration, it doesn't mean spe uh, speculation, because we have to respect principles, rules, but, but to be innovative. I was founder in 2008 of the EIT, which was kind of uh, parallel, which is kind of parallel to MIT, Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology, but it's European Institute for Innovations and Technology, which is based on knowledge uh, and innovation communities, putting together education, universities, research, research centers, businesses, and of course, a reasonable support of public money or public policy from uh, European uh, Union. And the EIT is example how to make Europe more innovation friendly. I was also uh, first uh, commissioner, uh, or we succeeded in the area of sport, which was not official, not full, because it was not mentioned in the treaties, to prepare and to publish first, adopt with member states, first uh, white paper on sport. Why I mention it? Because sport is so important, so popular, so spread all over the world. Like Olympic ideal from Europe now is global. Sport becomes global. And it can be used as a communicator, as organizer, motivator, to get people together, to celebrate humanity, togetherness. And so now we have, after a few years of, of hard work and innovations, sport is first time ever since 2009 mentioned in the treaties and now represents uh, policy, supplementary competence or, or uh, supportive uh, policy of, of European Union to what states are doing and, uh, and promoting. So, uh, conclude my message from the beginning. Now it's 100 years, and this, especially in this part of Europe, you can notice it, you can see it, legacy in good and bad shape, whatever it means. 100 years since Bolshevik Revolution on this continent. Very bloody, very divisive, oppressive. And, um, and uh, legacy, re remembrance, knowledge, uh, of the totalitarian past in order to, to behave differently now and for future means invitation to live together more than to exist together, to look for the values which are so crucial for each of us and all of us together and to work upon them, promote them. And uh, next century may be better, not only in Europe. Must be better, should be better, depends on us. It's not, you know, from the climate change, or I don't want to speak about decisions of American, American president on climate change, but freedom, justice, rule of law, humanity depends for future century more on us than our, on our forefathers. So, uh, just to look back uh, and, 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 and ahead, in 2004, we made larger, large uh, step ahead. It was biggest ever enlargement with 10 new member states, um, which now comprise altogether 28 countries, half billion population, which is really a major part of uh, the original dream. Um, I was first ever commissioner for multilingualism. In 2004, we have created multilingualism as a policy. I want to remind you that first ever, and now 60th birthday of the European Union is, is so important, may, maybe to mention, 1957. But after 1957, the first uh, kind of secondary uh, legislative piece of the European Union adopted uh, was on languages, official languages of the European community. Uh, it was um, uh, number one, 1958. This is, this is history, a very important message. Languages are important, are crucial. The number one decision, official languages. Since four, 
languages and six member states, we moved to 28 member states, 23 languages and, four al and three alphabets, which is not, not so easy. But as I said yesterday, it's not a mess. It's not um, anarchy. It's not chaos. This is diversity. <clears throat> this is mosaic. Europe, in cultural sense, in linguistic sense, is a mosaic, not melting pot, I hope, and not um, a salad bowl. Salad bowl is English expression. Yes, mosaic is better and more inspirational picture. Parts pro toto, each piece has a meaning, a value, and the botchaf, the whole, and the, the, the message of the whole picture is, of course, important. Uh, and that's, that's uh, Europe. Ad intra, ad extra. If we, if we understand this mosaic, I think we are the best protagonists of preservation and, and innovation or restoration or renaissance for 21st century. If we lose the mind or the meaning or the value of this mosaic, we destroy it. Goethe said that we earn the, the heritage. Only when we earn heritage, we really possess it. What easy comes, easy goes. What is really earned, including freedom, culture, rule of law, sense of justice, responsibility, culture or ethics of responsibility, this goes on. And this is then really possession of the country, of the nation. So I, I established a policy as, as a multidimensional expression of importance of languages and linguistic skills, multilingualism for areas of citizenship, of business, employment, economy, now, of course culture, cultural creativity. Those companies who understand all these, I say in a few sentences, are really innovative, open, open-minded, successful. They go global. They are not only local. Of course, they think locally, but act, uh, they think globally and act, act locally. But um, all this is important when we speak about multilingualism. We united uh, several DGs on uh, education, culture, youth on um, uh, translations, interpretations, and publications into one family, and it was very good. Then it, in 2007, after next wave of enlargement, when Romania joined, Romanian colleague uh, um, Orban took over this portfolio. But I think this was important time, showing that languages can contribute to living together and to, to overall growth of the community as a community. Uh, Irish came back because they realized that if Slovak, Czech, Maltese, Maltese, Malta is smaller than this city, is official language, so why not Irish? So I've seen Irish ministers speaking or reading Irish because they were not able to speak it in full sense of, you know, fluent speaking. It's a restoration or renovation even for, for uh, old uh, European languages because they want to be seen, they want to be part, they want to be equal around the table. That's good. Not melting pot, not salad bowl, but mosaic. And of course it meant a lot of input processes, progresses on exchange of the best practices, on, on uh, teaching and learning of languages. Uh, we have been quite push even on, on these areas in, uh, in European cooperation. Uh, in 2002, European Union member states adopted this decision which was political on uh, uh, learning languages uh, for enlargement and for living together. One plus two formula was, uh, was adopted as a political decision. Mother tongue plus two, one of the two should be preferably, preferably uh, a neighbor, language of the neighbor. But what happened later was a lack of real commitment to deliver, to follow this decision. And according to the, the study or evaluation survey, survey LANG 2011, uh, and then next year 2012 by the European Commission, results showed a lack of progress or even decline of knowledge 
or language linguistic skills in some countries, uh, both in the first and in the second language. So I think that's one of the reasons why I say we need different, new, better, innovative approach to look back and to learn better how to achieve it. Um, there was a um, European uh, civic uh, societal platform for support of multilingualism established by our commission in, in that period, uh, by commissioner colleague Leonard Orban in 2007. And there were um, many reasonable recommendations uh, adopted or proposed for Europe for future, how to learn better, um, and also uh, how to uh, um, make real uh, professional assessments, what's going on in the area of multilingualism. So we should look into the, the ways and means and, and uh, experiences, uh, whether it's enough that English is uh, um, language number one, or is it the best if this is language number one for thinking, taking up other languages, I used to say, and I repeat even now in English, saying English only is not enough. English only is not enough. It became lingua franca. It's good to get you know, easy communication in China, in Mongolia. Mongolian prime minister came to see me as commissioner to say, now we go for English as a compulsory, not Russian. Okay, Mongolia, speaking in European Union on English. But uh, I think uh, we need to promote also innovative or classical ways how to grasp opportunities. Latin is important base for language learning. Esperanto was mentioned. It's not so artificial when people die, when people die for Esperanto. We have great experience, and this is about totalitarian Europe. The persecution was also on, the, on this base. Um, we have um, a good experience from different countries, from, for example, Poland, uh, Hungary. Uh, of course, the um, next speaker will also deal with springboard to languages, which is one of the points uh, how to use uh, the best practices and even Esperanto for taking up many other languages. Uh, Central European cooperation can show that it makes sense for multilingualism. Slovakia in the middle of Slavic family is a good uh, input or entry uh, point for better communication. We have promoted integrated lifelong learning, including uh, linguistic components like uh, integrated content uh, uh, and language learning or Erasmus as a mobility instrument par excellence. You know, I think this is the most known and the best program ever in the Union. I was launching in 2004 Erasmus Mundus for those from outside to share with us around Erasmus inside. This is inspiration from, from medieval Europe. So we need to get back with the Bologna process where we were in terms, terms of openness, communication, quality or recognition of knowledge, not only in football, football but also in, in education. In football we recognize quality and results and, you know, competitions. We need to get back and, and to be more open in education. So, uh, one of the points I wanted to raise and is a key one is that we are here, many of you, and I mean in Europe, European Union more precisely, formally, as a citizens not as visitors or tourists. Of course, you are visiting, visiting, but citizens. And that's a high difference, big difference. Because tourists come and leave, and citizens stay within the space of shared citizenship. And it mean, means more. It means rights and duties. Because no household will work, operate uh, without obligations. No country can survive without fulfilling its duties, obligations. Um, why I mention it? Because we need balanced and active approach. This is European citizenship. We share it and we feel it much more when we are outside. Sometimes we, we forget and tend even to neglect 
uh, what how important this this change is and uh, there is a lot of education different style different levels on national citizenship in our countries symbols history geography legacy culture top the best why not if we want and, and we should live together not only exist together as citizens not as visitors should learn for european citizenship it's uh, it's not something speculative it's normal to know to understand to be proud of beethoven tchaikovsky or uh, bach or other other uh, great personalities mm. To share the best uh, heritage in culture, which is so special in Europe. Europe is most visited place in the world from touristic point of view, not because of beaches or swimming opportunities, but because of tremendous cultural heritage. Our cultural heritage, Europa Nostra. But to say it's my Europe means a bit more than just, you know, grammar. It means mentality conscience. So to learn for European citizenship, I think it's very important uh, because uh, to feel at home means a lot. It means also to care about my home. Europe, my home means I'm interested in, I care about. I'm so sorry for Brexit. I respect, but I think together it, it, it was, it is better, but okay. Door is open. I hope also for enlargement for those who are knocking on the door. Um, without learning for European citizenship, I think we are, we are lost uh, in political sense. And politics is, again, not speculation. It's part of public life, public responsibility. So we need to, to learn about European history, European values, which are our European values, European cultures, symbols, to promote patriotism, but not nationalism. I think this is clear distinction. We should be patriots. Our, our identities are multifold or multidimensional. Uh, and they are not competing with each other. My personal, family, local dimension is not competing with my regional affiliation, my national, my European affiliation. It's enrichment. It's enrichment, not a zero-sum game. And languages play in this uh, sense also a very important role because if we really don't understand how we can really move and work together in Hungary, in Austria, or, you know, freedom to move, freedom to reside, uh, freedom to, to, to make business, to study, is invitation to communicate. And communication means to build communion. And why communion is important? Because we need somebody to know ourselves, to understand myself, I need somebody else. La chemin le plus court de moi, moi c'est l'autre. I need the other body, other person to understand myself, to find myself. Nobody can become, can become happy, isolated. So that's, that's the meaning of communia, communication. It's not just, you know, fun. Of course, fun is fine, but something deeper is coming after. And um, maybe even issues of official languages and one language for Europe or uh, common language, lingua franca, is also to be seen as instrument for learning, but also instrument also for, for self-identification. Um, I want to uh, conclude by reminding one nice uh, point from uh, Massimi Razzelio from 1866, uh, who said, L'Italia è fatta, restano da fare gli italiani. We have created Italy, now we need to create Italians. We have created Europe, now we need to create Europeans. This is not artificial creation or creativity. It's something about mental nature, 
where people see Europe as their homeland, patria of their patria, homeland of their home, uh, something important, common, enriching, not just market, not just euro or geography, it's much more. And language and communication should do uh, great service to this mental shift in 21st century. So, uh, to conclude definitely, I think that what we have started through enlargement and with the multilingualism policy should be reinstalled or somehow enforced and used as important component of transformation. And not just ad intra for Europe, but also for the world. Because as we exported totalitarian ideologies, world wars from Europe, even genocides, I'm sorry to say, but that, that's reality of the past. We also shared very positive and now global legacies like Olympic movement, international law, democracy, cradle is in Europe. Um, I mentioned some maybe universities, European construction, um, theater, and so on. We can and we should also share motivation for living together in peace and justice. European integration is an example of and for universal solidarity. It's not Eurocentric. The, the values, the principles are universal. So it can be shared. There is African Union since 2000. It's far from, you know, perfect or from uh, comparisons of European integration. But Africa needs such Europe. We need Middle East, which is a mosaic, not a mess or, or a region in flames. They need our assistance. They need our model of living together in diversity, not in uniformity, not ISIS, not Islamism, not Caliphate. No, no. Unity in diversity, or at least diversity respected. So that's responsibility. This is not, you know, dreaming. This is our responsibility, our interest. If not, we are losers as well. So, uh, dear friends, I'm very happy that Slovakia now can serve as soil or, or meeting place, but not only for meeting, but also for living together, learning together, and transforming 21st century into a better century than the previous one. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jan. Now we have uh, questions and comments. I, I think that was an excellent presentation and a very, be very be good beginning to, to today's discussions, and particularly the point on European identity, which is ha in harmony with our own national identities. It's additional. It's not instead of the nation. We can still love our own country, but we also feel at home in any part of, of Europe. Um, we'll take questions. I think the first I saw was here, then. Duncan, mi parlo se sperante e tu eventuale vi povos traduci. Ok, this gentleman will speak in Esperanto and I will translate. Do, vi parolis per il fatto che in molte Europa e Landoi la generale cono dei fremdai lingui è stas malaltigianta. You mentioned that in many European countries the general knowledge of, of languages has been uh, decreasing. Kai uh, eble shaina salmi ke uh, iu kialo uh, estas da facto ke uh, la angla prenas pli kai pli da partoi della lingua mercato. And perhaps uh, one of the reasons is that uh, English has been more and more uh, uh, taking over the, uh, the linguistic market. Considerante anche o comprensibile la cultura, la musica, la letteratura, la film o i cotopò. When one considers uh, cultural aspects like films, music, uh, pop music, uh, etc. Do la domanda è stas, eh, ci vi pensas che tiu eh, tiu tendenzo eh, da origos eh, pli grandigos, pli grandigos eh, a une Kai kiu kiel oni povas eventuale 
eh, pli, no, pli la, la multilingua in situazione. Uh, the question is, uh, uh, do you think that this uh, domination of English is likely to continue or even grow stronger? Or is there some way of uh, uh, having a more balanced uh, multilingualism? Uh, maybe no. I'll take a few questions first of all. We had a question here as well, a comment. My name is Michael Oberseiter and I only have a short comment. Uh, is it really true that Irish is not official language because I read in the newspaper after Brexit that the first language which Ireland has announced to the European Union is Irish and not English and due to the Brexit English will lose its status as official language of European Union because Malta also said Maltese is their first language. Uh, perhaps one more question, then we'll have a replies. Is there any, any more questions or comments at the moment? Yes. Yes, my name is Konrad Fuhrmann I'm from Brussels. I've been working in the unit uh, uh, which was uh, collaborating with uh, Commissioner Orban, and there were many uh, very interesting and important initiatives, uh, as you know exactly. But now my impression is uh, that uh, uh, all this uh, policy is being forgotten, uh, step by step. So uh, the successor of uh, Commissioner Orban had uh, still multilingualism in the name of uh, her portfolio, Vasiliu, but it was uh, quite neglected. And now it's, uh, multilingualism has gone completely. So why, uh, why this and what uh, will be the consequences of this uh, decline of multilingualism in the European Union? Especially in this situation where what we have uh, today uh, of rising populism, uh, which is a, a sign of alienation of uh, the population with the English-speaking elite. Thank you very much. Uh, now, now I'll hand back to, to Jan to, to reply. Thank you, Sean, and thank you for your um, not only questions but real points on um, English and um, English only. I, I think that in a way the tendency is clear that um, English became already global language which is not bad. I am not against, because we need at least one language to understand, basically or globally. It's still not, you know, in all parts of the world, but in all major institutions, uh, in all major communication channels, it's now used. So, lingua franca is there. But even more with, let's say, tendencies, trends, even the next question on Brexit. So what now? English will be uh, sent out because United Kingdom is out and uh, we, we need sort of member state with official request to have English inside. Um, Brexit is still ahead. I don't want to comment it too much, but, um, but uh, English will get special whatever status or uh, adaptation of what what we need treaties or secondary legislation will happen uh, but what comes as additional even more visible or pressing point is so where are the others uh, are they secondary or less important and precisely uh, if we don't care about identities, about differences, about minorities, then we lose almost everything. We, we lose majority if we don't care about minority. I mean majority in terms of democratic, mental maturity, to live together, to bear responsibility, to go on from crisis to crisis. This is not tragedy if we go up. There were so many crises. My father would love, my father would love to, to address euro crisis or economic crisis of our time or what we have now. My uncle, brother of my father, was killed by secret services of Czechoslovakia. So what we have in hands 
is a great legacy. We are lucky generation to discuss languages, to learn more, which we had a compulsory system, but I'm, you know, always sort of comparing. If we, and this is about Goethe, if we earn our heritage, then we possess it. So let's embrace what is the status, status quo, and go up, go further. So English only is not enough. If we can and we do promote other languages in important countries, in important regions, then our policies are more successful, our companies are, you know, champions, not only on small pitch, but on the global pitch. And companies understand this message. They are not monolingual at, at extra. They communicate on their networks or inside in the room, let's say one or a few languages, but they communicate very locally, very empathetically vis-a-vis -vis, uh, clients to be you know, well received, to be uh, successful. So I think we need to uh, embrace a uh, situation and to work for a real functioning uh, multilingualism. Europe as a model and Europe as a driver, leader, for our own sake, our languages, many of them became global languages. So if we care, we really promote global answers to very uh, special regional or local questions. I think Irish will remain or should and English will get some special position or treatment uh, and on uh, European Commission I think it should reconsider in a way this is not interference but my advice as former commissioner to colleagues in, in Brussels that if we lose empathy or sensitivity on non-material issues, if we focus on Euro, Eurozone, market, economy only, and I was Deputy Foreign Minister, Deputy for, uh, Prime Minister for Economy or Transport, Construction, Regional Policy, Tourism, our government 2012 fell on Euro during firewall adoption, so I know what it means. But we have to be very empathetic and constructive and active on non-material issues because they matter. Many times they matter more than material issues. This is from Einstein. We, we frequently count what is measurable, but these matters are not, these uh, issues are not decisive, but decisive become those which are not non-measurable. For example, political trust, perceptions, feeling of equal treatment, sharing really values in full sense of, of the term. So this is appeal to European Commission to return to the best practices, to do more for uh, citizens being treated and feeling like equal, uh, like not uh, forgotten, uh, having Brussels and European Union working for them not just for some or some time or something. And a linguistic component is a must. It cannot be just a ceremonial occasion or 26 September day of languages or, you know, sometimes something. No. Daily bread, daily issue. I'm th th thank you very much, uh, Jan, for that. Uh, I think that's a very good concluding point, and particularly the, the last point you made about the importance of the spiritual and the, the non-visible aspects. Uh, it reminds me of uh, the French writer Saint-Exupéry, the Le Petit Prince, where he said that the, what's really important is invisible to the eye. So uh, thank you very much for your attention.